So first of all, from here it's possible. I love that. I feel like that sounds like the next Marvel movie, right? At Texas Tech University, from here it's possible. And the story starts from here. Coming up, it's time to aim high as Texas Tech receives not one but two visits from the Department of the Air Force in a six-month time span. General C.Q. Brown Jr., the Chief of Staff for the Air Force, sits down with us to discuss his alma mater and what they're doing to gain the attention of the Air Force. First, we start with Dr. Sherry Welsh, the Director of the Air Force Office of Scientific Research, who along with her team paid a visit to Lubbock to see what's being done in the labs at Texas Tech that could have global application to help the Air Force do the impossible every day. That story from here. I see the excellence. I mean, these students are stellar. I love the motto here at Texas Tech, from here it's possible. Me, myself, I like to operate in the realm of the possible. And what I love about Texas Tech is how you, are, how you all are building a culture of curiosity and diversity. More than likely, you've heard the expression, when opportunity knocks, answer it. Suffice to say, no truer words could be used to describe why Dr. Welsh does what she does. Having worked in the Federal Service now for over three decades with stops in the Missile Defense Agency and then back to the Department of the Air Force have created a path she plainly says she would not have anticipated. My uh, career had a very different trajectory going on, um, but as with what most people should do is I grabbed opportunities, um, I had experiences that, that changed the way I look at things. I earned my PhD when I was in my 40s and that completely changed my trajectory. Uh, which is why I'm uh, very excited to be at the Air Force Research Lab now in my current position. So why exactly was Dr. Welsh paying a visit to Texas Tech? Since I've never been here before, when we were asked to come, uh, I jumped at the chance uh, to come out here. I've never been to Lubbock before, I've never been to Texas Tech before, and uh, I can tell you, wonderful tours this morning. We visited the nanophotonics lab, we visited the uh, Pulse Power and uh, Power Electronics Center, as well as the Combustion Lab. So just fantastic things going on in, in Texas Tech, and we're very excited. We've always been partners with Tex Texas Tech, and uh, we just want to find ways to partner more and do more with your school. We are facing challenges in the nation right now that requires, we must have a whole of government, academia, and industry approach, right? So that means constantly looking out in the universities to see where all the amazing research is going on and making sure we're partnering in the right areas. And those areas are ever expanding for Dr. Welsh and her team. When I spend too much time in the office, that strategic competition that we out, have out there that's trying to unseat us as the world leader makes me really nervous. Um, that's why the department is driving so hard and being laser, getting laser focused, right? So then I come and do a few university visits and I see the excellence. I mean, these students are stellar. They're not just students, right? They are stellar students, highly capable, being highly trained. Directed energy is extremely important area. I was chief engineer for the Airborne Laser Program, so I do know how important that is. So just seeing the excitement in every lab that we visited, you've got undergraduates doing research here, uh, and we're talking about things, some things that I didn't even know about. So it was very exciting to see that level of excellence um, you know, one thing that, that really uh, was impressive this morning was the combustion lab. And uh, Dr. Michelle Puentoya, she talked about how she's teaching the students the importance of partnerships and building relationships and connectivity with people and to take those relationships with you, with every job that you have, with every lab experience that you have, because that's what it takes in the science and technology community, right? It has to be, we have to know each other, we have to have relationships so we can reach out and say, hey, I have this, I have this problem in this project. Can you help me out? Well, you need to know who to call, right? So that's why then I get, we're still driving hard, but I, I take a little sigh of relief because then I see all the excellence in the schools and that's what's waiting in the wings. So I, I love the motto 
here at Texas Tech from here it's possible. Me, myself, I like to operate in the realm of the possible and it's critical to know what my options are. Oftentimes we don't know what we don't know. So it, it is very important that coming to visit here at Texas Tech, they are truly laying out the pathways for their students and, and really giving them the art of the possible, showing what those pathways look like, showing what those pathways postgraduate life could look like. We have a STEM workforce that is not truly reflective of the nation that we serve right now. And it is very inspiring coming here to Texas Tech, seeing that they're laying out these pathways and, and you can truly see that one day we will have STEM demographics that match that of our workforce. So it's very important for us to foster the curiosity in students because we want to pique their excitement and their, again, the curiosity of what it's like to work in uh, the Air Force Research Laboratory, which is a national lab. Heard a lot of students talking about what a great experience it is to be able to come and work at a national lab. And we have multiple ways that we can engage students across different STEM disciplines, across different academic disciplines for them to come work with us at our laboratory, working side by side with our AFRL subject matter experts. They'll be in the lab, working, doing hands-on research, working with us. And what I love about Texas Tech is how you, are, how you all are building a culture of curiosity and diversity through your serving this program. And again, being here, working with the students, having them walk us through the lab, that was such a wonderful experience because they are so knowledgeable in knowing that this is going to be the talent of the future leaders for our nation. This just has me very excited at what innovation is going to be for us here in the future. It's a broad, vast horizon in front of us as it relates to the future of our country and innovation. And what's being done at Texas Tech reaches those touch points for Dr. Welsh and her colleagues. The nation is facing some very difficult challenges. To get after those challenges, we need, and I'll use another Marvel reference, we need Stark Industries level kind of problem solving going on in this country. How do you get it? Through diversity. Where's the diversity? It's here. So we need to capitalize on the excellence that you already have going on in these schools. We need to help you build more capacity in these schools. Building something worthwhile is hard work. Dr. Welsh says the Air Force is ready to provide a cornerstone, one of those coming in the form of a new program yet to be unveiled. Texas Tech's role as a minority serving institution could be a key towards the program's success. It's going to be the AFRL Basic Research National Science Portals. So the vision here is to have portals all across the country, each focused on a very particular science area. Each will get a very specific Department of the Air Force problem to solve, to lead us to more uh, national security. And this program will only be open to HBCUs and MSIs. And so there will be no competition with you know, other schools outside of HBCU MSIs. So I'm really excited about that because one, it just helps us accelerate and flood again the, the U.S. with diverse STEM talent. Uh, and we need programs like that. Back in November of 2022, Department of the Air Force Chief of Staff General C.Q. Brown Jr. paid a visit to his alma mater. During his visit, he sat down with Texas Tech President Lawrence Skuvenek, toured the campus, participated in some Veterans Day activities, but also sat down with us to discuss his time in Lubbock, his observation of the research going on across campus, and the strides that have been made since he was a student, such as the distinction as a minority-serving institution. It's, it's, again, just as impressive as some of the technology, and uh, it's an important part because that's when you think about the demographics of our nation. Um, and how the universities adjusted. Um, I think that is it's important, but it's also it's really, really good to see. As I talked about with the President Schumanek, is um, you know when I came here, there were 400 African Americans out of 23,000 students, and we I knew all of them. We all knew each other, and when you have four times that amount here today, the percentage has grown uh, by threefold for African Americans. And then the same thing when you look at a, a Hispanic-serving institution. The key point about Texas Tech is it provides opportunity. Opportunity is exactly why the Department of the Air Force has interest in what goes on here on the South Plains. Those opportunities have opened doors to research many think wasn't possible. But that's what's being done here, making the impossible possible. Bigger, better, and bolder. Texas Tech and a number of other institutions that actually were able to do things that help support our, our national defense. And not only our national defense, but it's also the health and welfare of our members uh, when we're doing things that we've done for years and the better we understand and how we better you know, 
develop equipment and processes and procedures to take care of our service members as they work some of these very complex missions, but also to provide them some capabilities uh, when you think about the, you know, um, the pulse power, um, you think, you know, from my perspective, I'm very interested in something like that because uh, I want to be able to use that for a, a uh, air defense type system or missile defense type system that is a lot less exp expensive than a very expensive interceptor. And so being able to, to tap into the technology, uh, but really the minds of those that are here doing their research, that, uh, I mean, I'm just impressed by the patience they have to spend you know, all that time and really digging into the details and asking the really hard questions and not throwing in the towel. And, and that's the beauty of uh, an institution like Texas Tech where you have uh, great minds with the opportunity to you know, put those great minds together with the technology and to provide us capability for the military. We are trying to continue to grow that directed energy community and we consider Texas Tech a national center of excellence in this area. With respect to possible applications, I'm really just excited about directed energy as a tool, right, for us to continue technology development in support of the warfighter in the future. Chief Brown, as well as the Secretary of the Air Force Honorable Kendall. Secretary Kendall has the operational imperatives, and then uh, the chief has priorities. Of course, they're, they're well aligned together for the Department of the Air Force. And they're absolutely, those are our demand signals, right? Those help us get very focused where we need to accelerate research and development and technology advancement for the warfighter. So they're absolutely demand signals that we looked at, look at. In addition to the Office of the Secretary of Defense, have they have their 14 critical technology areas and we also roll those into our demand signals to help us figure out where we need to go, right? Why I keep mentioning the Chief's uh, priorities, OSD's priorities, uh, Secretary Kendall's priorities, is because we need the universities to know what those are so we can all be in alignment, right? So we all know what we're gonna work on together. Um, and I did see actually, um, to name a few, just three areas that I thought we could partner and grow, uh, grow a lot more in very specific areas. Resilient space systems. When I was walking through the lab, I wrote that down. Sensing capabilities and command and control. Just a few, right? A few areas, and again, that workshop I think is gonna dig up a lot of areas where you have a lot of expertise, you have research capacity, and you have amazing students doing all this great work. So where does that leave us moving forward? According to Dr. Welsh, the sky is the limit. Oh, the lab tours have been wonderful because I don't get this in every university, but all of the students have been doing the tours. So they've been telling us about their research they're doing and the equipment that they have and um, just really talking about how it's going to be used in the future. Uh, that's, very, that's very inspiring. So I loved that you all had the students leading the lab tours. That was hands down uh, the best. I think Michelle's vision in the combustion lab was really, it was very heartwarming, right? It made me feel really good because already, it, like across the Air Force Research Lab, we know how important relationships are. And she's already building that knowledge into her students so that they're already building their connections while they're at school and they know how important it is. To catch more episodes from here, check out our social media platforms. I'm your host, Paul Tubbs, and at Texas Tech University, from here, it's possible.